Oh, hi YouTube. So a really quick video, how I film my videos in the glider. I reckon it's important to make sure you get all the right gear so that you can do this safely without distractions and without things falling off and causing a hazard in the cockpit. So I'll show you how my setup and what I use. So I'm using a standard GoPro suction mount here. On top of that is a ball joint attachment, which means I can swivel the GoPro and look left and right pretty quickly and easily. On top of that, is a snap lock mounting system. This is designed with magnets in each four corners and it magnets onto this other plate like so. So while I'm flying, I can easily take this off and point it at something like my panel and then plop it back on really quickly and easily and there's no way this is gonna come off. So it's a pretty safe, reliable and quick method to get it back on to the mount so it's not floating around in the cockpit. I have the GoPro beside my right hand shoulder, partly so it gets a nice view of both the panel and the view out the window, but also the microphone is close to my mouth because it's right here, so you can actually hear me over the wind noise and the engine noise even of the glider. The snap lock mount came with an extra base, so I can actually use it here on the pocket of my hood, and that actually lets me have a cockpit facing me shot in the glider and it's relatively safe this cannot fall off if I hit a bump. So here's the other mount I use which is for my cell phone. This is a ram mount which is a very popular method of installing equipment in aircraft. I've got see, a ball mount on both sides of my cockpit so I can mount one wherever I want. A lot of people have them installed on their panels. So here's a look at the ram mount system which I highly recommend. There's lots of different base mounts you can get, then you can get lots of different arms, and then there are mounting brackets for every possible type of device in existence. For example, this one here, the X-Grip range. I'm not a huge fan of these. They spring, so you can clamp on any phone, and it doesn't matter if you've got a case on your phone or not, it'll probably work. This is a camera mount attachment, and then this is a custom designed iPhone mount for a specific iPhone. These custom molded iPhone and here's an iPad mount are really good and secure at holding your device but they won't work if you've got a case on it. So that's where these sort of things work better. Check the description below for links to uh, the RAM mount range. You tighten it up and then this is rock solid it's not going to come off. Now on the ball mount I've got a special case which I'm using on my phone and this is a peak design case and mount and the way it works it's got this little slot here in the in the case and that slots into this attachment on this mount so it clicks in with magnets to get it in the right place and then it's clicked in and locked on so again I can very quickly get this on and off and put it back on in the cockpit it uses a um, side buttons here which you push to release it so I just need one of those pushed and it will pop off but otherwise it's completely locked on. It also has some rubber dampeners so that if I'm running my engine, it, the vibrations aren't destroying the lenses in the phone, which is quite nice. This snap lock mount system I've also got in the car with a non-locking but charging base so that I can just plonk it on much like that and it's on and working. So this is the best mount I've found for a phone in the cockpit. You can buy this attachment here, not just in a case, but you can buy it as a stick-on for any other device, like an iPad, a small iPad at least. So let's talk about suction cups for a moment. I try and avoid suction cups where I can, simply because with enough weight and pressure, there is a chance, with enough leverage, you will break the canopy. But I definitely, if you can avoid this and instead install, say, one of these on your panel or on the side of your glider like I have, Another key feature of all these things is you've got to make sure none of these arms get in your way. So if you have to uh, bail out of the glider, you do not want these snagging you and stopping you getting out of the glider. Let's compare the footage from an iPhone and a GoPro. You can see the GoPro is quite a wide angle lens. The phone has three lenses built in, so there is a wider angle one, which will give me a, even a wider view than the uh, GoPro almost. The iPhone also has a 2.5 zoom lens which is handy if you want to get slightly further away shots and you can see the difference there it's quite quite a lot more zoomed in handy for when you want to shoot a glider coming and landing you can see in the gopro here you won't even 
going to be able to see him. He's behind the tree. Here he is, just behind the tree there. They both look pretty good go shooting into the sun. Interestingly, the main camera lens on the GoPro on the phone does work better, so that has better dynamic range. And here we are shooting into the sun. You can see at our club hangar. So my phone I tend to use for long shots or if I want nice clear photos out the window. So this has got the three lenses including a 70 millimeter. So that's really useful for doing out the window shots of gliders and other things that although it's not a great zoom lens it's still better than nothing and uh, gliders have to be pretty close for it to be good footage but it stabilizes it really well. And that's the other advantage of a GoPro as well. It stabilizes the footage, so it doesn't matter. You can hold it. You, look, I'm shaking the camera right now. So between GoPro and the iPhone, I'm pretty well sorted. Okay, and here's the third and final bit of gear. I, and that's a ZV-1 little uh, 4K camera. I like this because it's small and portable, which fits in the van quite easily. Uh, I don't want anything too big and bulky. It was relatively cheap and affordable. And on this, I've installed a small rig uh, cage. It's got a 70 millimeter zoom on it. So that gets me more zoom than say the GoPro, which is only a wide angle lens. I have found though that my iPhone also does 70 millimeter zoom. So I've been taking this with me in the glider less and less and just using the phone for those uh, close up out the window videos of other aircraft flying nearby, for example. This camera I still use for all my interior shots here in the uh, van, so whenever you see me talking in the van, I'm normally using this. And for any exterior shots on the ground, I'll use this because the quality is just so much better. I don't use any external mounts on the glider for several reasons. We've got uh, documents in New Zealand that explain how you must install things on an aircraft externally, like cameras and they need a physical attachment. Suction cups on, ex on external, I wouldn't trust them because as you go up and down, the pressure changes and you could easily lose your suction cup. The other reason I don't install anything is I'm doing long flights. I don't want the drag of a camera sitting on the glider. You know, we spend all this money getting long wings and making it streamlined. You don't want stuff stuck on the outside of your glider, otherwise it's ruining your performance. Another key thing I've done here is have a USB port installed for the GoPro so that it's plugged in and not running out of battery midway through the flight, which can be a problem if you're doing 4K footage and longer, longer videos. If you've got any questions, fire them in the comments below. I've got links to all the products mentioned in this video down in the description below. Also check out our online store. We've got some t-shirts and hoodies. New designs coming soon. Stay tuned.